Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 146. Day 3146. Three in the thousand place. Three in the thousand places to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 146. We are working on the practice test that you will find at the very end of the book on page number 300. And 66 on page number 366, section number 6. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that we are told that we have an integer. We are told that we have an integer which which they are calling v for some reason, and we are told that it is more than one. We are further told that this v is a square of an integer. What does it mean when you when we say that an integer is a square of an in other integer? And say, saying that an integer is a square of an other integer is a very awkward way of simply saying that it is a perfect square. So essentially, what they are saying is that v is a perfect square greater than one, because you see, one is a perfect square because one time one is one. But it cannot be 1, it has to be more than 1, so the next one is going to be 4, because 4 is 2 squared, then 3 squared, then 4 squared, then 5 squared, and so on and so forth. We could be any one of these values. It has to be a perfect square. The question simply is, which of the following numbers must also, must also be a perfect square if this guy is a perfect square? If V is one of these numbers, then which of the following quantity that they give you must also be a perfect square? The most important word here is must. It's not which of the following may be, could be, must be. Must be means it has to be true all the time. Let's look at statement one. The statement one is very simple, very straightforward. They tell us that it is 81 times v. v we know is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. And 81 is also a perfect square, but it is simply 9 squared. 9 squared and some other integer, which is also a perfect square, the integer would be like this, square root of v, because this quantity is a perfect square, a product of two perfect square will also be a perfect square. Therefore, therefore, 81v is also a perfect square. If you take any two numbers here and multiply them, the product of those two numbers will also be a perfect square. For example, 9 times 25, is that a perfect square? Of course it is, because 9 is simply 3 squared, and 25 is simply 5 squared. So not 3 times 3 squared, 5 squared, 3 times 3 squared times 5 squared is just 15 squared. There you go. Which means the square root of this quantity would simply equal 15. Whatever that quantity is, we don't have to worry about it, but it's a perfect square. You take any two, any two perfect square, you multiply them. Here's another one, for example, 121, which is the square of 11, times 169, which is the square of 13. And that's all we need to know. We don't have to figure out if, 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 if we are told, if we are told that, uh, if, if we are asked rather, if we are asked, is the product of these two quantities perfect square? The answer is yes. The product of these two quantities is perfect square because this is the perfect square, because it's a square of 11, just like this is a perfect square, it's a square of 9, and that is a perfect square. Product, product of two perfect squares will also be a perfect square. Therefore, statement 1 was very easy, very simple to figure out. It is the B and the C where people will have trouble. It is the B and the C where people will have some little bit of trouble. Let's take, let's take a look at statement B. We need the room, so let's start from the top. So keep in mind that it's a perfect square, we are told. B is a perfect square and it's more than 1. Let's look at statement B. Statement B says, how about this quantity? 25B plus 10 times the square root of V plus 1. Question is, is that a perfect square? What do we do? Is that a perfect square? Well, let's try some numbers, shall we? Let's try. Let's plug in some numbers and see what happens. Okay, and we know we have to plug in one of these values. V has to, V cannot be 1, it has to be more than 1, so it's either 4 or a 9 or a 16 or a 25 or a 36 or any of these things. 
any perfect score we can put in here and try it out. Let's try the smallest one. Let, let's erase this. Let's try the smallest one. Let V equal 4. Let V equal 4 and see what happens. 4 times 25 would be 100 and this is going to be 10 times square root of 4 which is just 2 plus 1. And what do you suppose we'll get when we do that? We'll get 100 plus 20 which was 120 plus 1 we will, we will get 121 which is a perfect square because 121 is the square of 11. If you like we can try one more time. Let's try the next one. Let's try the next one. We tried the 4. Let's try the next one. See what happens. Okay again 25 times 9, 25 times 9, plus 10 times square root of 9, plus 1. And let's see what we get. 25 times 9. Do you know what that is? How much that is? 25 times 9? I know what 25 times 10 is. That I do know. I'm very sharp. 20 ti 25 times 10 is just you put a 0 at the end, you get 250. So if 10 25s are 250, then 9 25 must be 25 less than 250, which is 225, which is 225. And 10 times 3, because square root of 9 is 3, 10 times 3 is 30, plus 1. Let's see, what do you suppose we're going to get? 225 plus 30 plus 1, we have 6 here, we have a 5 here, and we get 256. We get 256. Do you recognize it? You have to know your squares. You have to know your squares 1 through 20. Do you understand? 256 is also a perfect square. It's the square of 16. That is also a perfect square. But the question is, how many times do you try before you feel comfortable in saying, that that quantity is indeed a perfect square. This quantity is indeed a perfect square. Do you try one time? Do you try two times? Do you try three, four, five, twenty thousand times? How many times do you try in the exam? I would say usually a couple of times. That's it. If you want to do it one more time, you can do that, but it's, it costs time. Cost time is very precious in the exam. So uh, uh, if you try two times, that, that does not guarantee that it is the right answer because it's not algebra. Only algebra will give you an answer that is absolute. This is just trial and error. We have tried twice and it seems to be working. If you like, you can try one more time. If you like, we can try one more time. How about the one next one that we did not write down? The next one is 49. Let's try something bigger, see what happens. Now something like this would be damn silly thing to do during the exam because it's gonna take time. So let us, we are not doing we are not doing the exam right now, so let's try. Let let v equal to 49. 49 is a perfect square. Let's put it in. So we're gonna get 25 times v, which is 49 plus 10 times square root of 49 plus 1. Let's see what we get, shall we? We have to figure out what 25 times 49 is. What 25 times 49 is. Let's figure out what is 25 times 50. Do you know what that is? Do you know what 25 times 5 is? 525 is 125. 525 is 125. So you just stick a 0 at the end, that's all. So 1250 represents, what does it represent? In the context of our discussion, 1250 represents 5025. It represents 5025. 50 50 are 1250. We don't want 5025, we want 4925. So just subtract 125 from it. And it's going to end up with 1225. You see? 1250 represents, 1250 represents 5025. If you subtract 125 from it, what you're left with is 4925. Do you understand? So that's that. 1200, 1225. That's it. This is not something we're going to do in the real exam. We are doing it just for the hell of it because we are here for learning purposes. It's not something to do in the real exam. So that's that. Let's erase this thing. We need the room. Square root of 49 is 7. 7 times 10 is 70 plus 1. Let's see what we get. 70 plus 1. We're going to get 6. We're going to get 9. 1296. 1296. Is that a perfect square? How are we going to figure out? How are we going to figure out if 1296 is a perfect square? Let's put it on the top. Oh, I erased the quantity. Blast it. We'll have to rewrite it. 1296. Again, the things that we're going to discuss right now, these are fundamental basic concepts in arith arithmetic, very basic concepts in arithmetic, that anybody who is about to sit for GRE should know by heart. These are fundamental things. So if you have any hope at all of getting even a half a decent score on the GRE, some basic things you have to know. For example, you have to know by recognizing the 256 was a perfect square. This one I do not expect you to know because it's not very common. Let's find out, shall we? But here's the basic things that you have to know. 25 squared, do you know what 25 squared is? 
You have to know by heart the 25 square is 625. You know what 30 square is? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and then we get two zeros, it's 900. Do you know what 40 square is? 40 square is same logic. 4 times 4 is 16, and then we're going to get two zeros. Well, this is 1300. This is about 1300. So it's more than 900, but it's less than 1300. What does it tell us? It tells us that this quantity is a, the square root of that quantity falls somewhere between 30 and 40. Somewhere between 30 and 40. Let's pick up speed, okay? Can it be 31? Can it be 31 squared? Can 31 squared? Can 31 squared be 96? The answer is no. Why? Because 31, 31 times 31, if you were to multiply 31 times 31, if you were to multiply 31 times 31, the unit digit will be 1. We don't care what the rest of this stuff is, it will end in a 1. Unit digit will be 1. Clearly, it's not going to work. We need the unit digit to be 6. So it's not 31, obviously. Can it be 32? No, 32 will end in a 4. 32 will end in a 4. 2 times 2 is the unit digit. Can it be 33? No, 33 is not going to work. We're going to end up in a 9. How about 34? Can it be 34? Oh, 34, 4 times 4 is 16. There you go. By golly, that is a hope. Let's try 34, shall we? Let's try 34. What should we multiply 34? Let's do it up here. We're going to multiply 34 times 34. 34 times 34. Are you ready? Here we go. 30 times 30. See, this 3, this 3 that we see here, is not a 3. It's not a 3 because it tells you how many tens we have, which is why it's called tens digit. It tells you how many tens we have. It tells us that 33, or 34 other, has 3 tens and 4 ones. So that's the 30. And this is the 30. So what is 30 times 30? 30 times 30 is 900. Let's do the next one. How about 30 times 4? 30 times 4 is 120. How about 4 times 3? Are we doing 34? Oh, 34... 16... Four, 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 four is a 16. 4, 4 is a 16. Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. 4 times 3 is going to be 12. And... Oh, sorry, 4 times 30 is 120. Again, is 120. Because you see is, let me put it the other way so we can see it, you see this is 300, 30 times 3 is 9, 300, 30 times 30 is 900, 30 times 4 is 120, and the other 120, 30 times 4 is 120, and then 4 times 4 is 16. What we get here is, here is your a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared, that's what this is. Think of this, T don't think of this as 34, what we're doing here is this, what we're doing here is this. We're doing it, 34 can be written as 30 times 4, can it? 30 plus 4 rather. 30 plus 4 times 30 plus 4, there you go. So this is your A and this is your B, B is 4. So A squared, which is this 900, and then AB, which is 120, and then other AB, which is another 120, because we have two AB, you see? A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, which is the last quantity, which is going to be 4 times 4. Let's add them up now. Let's add them up. 900 plus uh, 120 and 120 is 240 and 16. 6, 5, 11. No, it's too small. It is too small. What can we do? I thought 4 okay. times 4. 4 fourths are 16. It should, it should have worked. It, does, it didn't work. Obviously, it's not 35. It's not 35. How about 36? Ah, 6 times 6. 36 is a 6 times 6. It ends in a 6. We might have a hope with 36. Let's try 36, shall we? Let's try 36, see what happens. But there is no such thing, there is no such thing as let's try 36. It has to be 36 because we have already established that whatever it is, it has to be between 30 and 40. Because 30 squared is 900, 40 squared is 1600. And we're looking for something around 1300. So it has to be between 30 and 40. 36 is our only hope because 37 is going to end in 9. We don't have a 9 at the end. 38 is going to end in a 4 because 8, 8, 8 is a 64. That's not going to work. And besides, it's going to be it's getting to be a very high number. 39 is not going to work because 39 squared is going to end in a 1. It is 36. We just have to show it. We just have to show it. Here we go. 30 times 30 is 900. 30 times 6. 30 times 6. How much is 30 times 6? 30 times 6 is 180. 
and then another another 30 times 6. I prefer to go this way. 30 times 6. Let me erase it and redo it. 30 times 6 is 180, another 180, and then 6 times 6 is 36. We get a 6 here. We have to pay attention. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19. So we get a 9. Carry 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. So we get 12, 96. What do you know? So it does work. This quantity is a perfect square. It turns out that this quantity is a perfect square. And the quantity that we had was this. Quantity that we had is, you see, this is V. So we can figure out what it was. It's 25V plus 10 times the square root of V plus 1. We tried three different times. We tried three different times and it turns out that it is always turns out to be a perfect square. It seems like statement B works. It seems like statement B works. Do you understand? In the real exam, don't try 49. It'll be silly, damn stupid thing to do. Just try a smaller number, 4 and a 9, and that's it. If they work both of the time, take your chance and move on. Don't want, don't want to spend too much time. Unless, unless what? Unless you can obviate this plugging in business altogether. O B V I A T E. I believe that is the right spelling, and I hope and pray to God that we did actually cover it because I'm checking here, and we are, I'm taking time here in the video. I'm pretty sure we learned it in our vocabulary video, and there cannot possibly be too many words. There we go. Oh, what do you know? Day, day 52. Improve your vocabulary if you have any hope at all of getting a decent score in the verbal portion. That's what kills most of the people especially sentence completion, uh, all, they're, all they're checking is your vocabulary. That's all it is. It's a vocabulary exam. Obvious simply means to make something unnecessary, to make something superfluous, so, so something that becomes unneeded, unwanted, unrequired, uncalled for. We don't want it anymore. Do you understand? It's not needed. Unless we can somehow make it unnecessary. Make what unnecessary? Unless we can somehow make this plugging in business unnecessary, then how does one go about doing it? By doing it in a way that tells us the absolute truth. See, even this, even if we sit here and plug in, we try three times, we can try four times, we can try five times, we can try plugging in 50,000 times, and all of the 50,000 times it works out, but there is no guarantee that 50,000 in the first time it will also work out. There is no guarantee. Because it is not absolute, it's just plugging in technique, it's trial and error. The only absolute truth that you will find, that you will get, to ascertain whether or not this quantity is a perfect square is to analyze it algebraically. Would you like to do it? Let's do it algebraically. Let's do it algebraically and let's show it, let's show it algebraically without a shadow of doubt that this quantity is a perfect square. 25v plus 10 times the square root of v plus 1. Plus 1. Now, just to make, a, just to make it easier for us to follow, what is going on here, we're going to redefine our variable. What are we going to do? We're going to redefine our variable. We're going to do it algebraically. So this is the, this is the algebraic solution. And the very first thing we're going to do is redefine the variable. Let, let x be equal to square root of v. Are you with me? If x, if we define x as the square root of v, then what do you suppose x squared is going to be? x squared is going to be the square of this quantity. Isn't it? The square of that quantity, the square of the square of square root of v is just v. So let's do it now. Let's plug in this value in here. So it's 25 times v, 25 times v, which we know is x squared, plus 10 times the square root of v. The square root of v was x. That's how we defined it. We said, we said let x, we said let x be let x be the square root of v. So 10 times x plus 1. Are you with me so far? Let's pick up speed. Well, there is just that quantity is simply 5x squared, isn't it? Or we can just leave it like 25x squared. It doesn't matter. There are a couple of a couple of ways we can go about it. Let's just leave it like that. We're gonna factorize it. I was about to do I was about to do this this technique a plus b whole squared. We can do it that way also, or we can just factorize it. So can you think of two numbers? Can you think of two numbers which, when multiplied, 
which when multiplied gives us the product of 25 and which when added give us 10. We're looking for two numbers which when multiplied give us a product of 25 and which when added gives us a sum of positive 10. And of course those two numbers are 5 and 5. 5x five plus 5x. Five 5x five times 5x is 5x squared. 25x squared. And 5x plus 5x is 10 squared. Or 5x plus 5 squared is 10. 10x. Let's look at these two terms here. Let's look at the first two terms here. What do you find any common? Do you find anything common? We have a common factor of 5x. If you take out 5x common, what we're left from here is 5x. What we're left for a second term is just 1. Now let's look at these two terms. Let's look at these two terms. Do you find anything common? Is there any common factor between 5x and 1? Do the, do, the, do the terms 5x and 1 have anything in common? And the answer is indeed. What do they have in common? What they have in common is 1. They are both multiple of 1's. And then we get 5x here plus 1 here. Now, look at these two quantities. This quantity and this quantity. What do, they have? What do these two quantities have in common? What they have in common is 5x plus 1. 5x plus 1. After we take away 5x plus 1 common here, what we left here is 5x. What we left here is 1. So it boils down to 5x plus 1 whole square. In other words, this quantity that we see here, this quantity that we see here, it boils down to 5x plus 1 whole square. And since since x since s, x is equal to square root of 5, which what, what that what that means is that this expression, this quantity that we see here is simply 5 times root b plus 1 squared. Oh, what does it say? Oh, it, 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 we just showed, we just showed that this quantity, 25v plus 10, 10 times square root of v plus 1, that quantity that we see here, is a perfect square. It is indeed a perfect square because it can be written as a square of a quantity. If something can be written, written as, if something can be written as a square of another quantity, that is the definition of a perfect square. Hence, statement B works and it will always work. We don't have to do any plugging in if we were to analyze it this way. That's the algebraic way. So that was one way of doing it. This is a factorization method. This is a factorization method. Here's another method. Another method is to is to simply understand that 25x squared is simply 5x squared, 5x whole squared plus 10. The 10 that you see here is 10 times 2 times 5x plus 1, 5x times 1 plus 1 squared. Are you able to see? Are you able to see that this 5x is your a? a squared plus 2 times 5x, which is a, times 1, which is our b, plus 1 squared, which is b squared. And how much is a squared? How much is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared? a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is simply a plus b whole squared. And our a was 5x, and our b was 1. Well, which is what we found. It's a, it's a perfect square. And then if you, if you substitute the original, original variable, you can do that if you want to. It makes no difference. The point is, we have established that that quantity is a perfect square. It will always work, because it is a perfect square. We just showed it, algebraically. Without a shadow of doubt, it will always be. We don't have to plug in any number at all, and we don't have to wonder. With the plugging in, as I said before, you always have this doubt in the back of your mind. Oh, I tried twice, I tried three times. Does it always really work? I don't know. But of course, in the real exam, you're not going to try three or four times. Just try twice and move on. And try smaller numbers, you understand? Let's do statement, statement number three. So statement B also works. Statement B also works. Let's look at statement C. I'm going to erase all of this thing. We don't need any of that. Work on your vocabulary. It's very important. It's vital. It's essential. It is crucial. It is absolutely necessary if one has any hope of getting a decent score. Just type in, just type in GRE vocabulary words in the search bar, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day 52 and watch the video and learn it properly. Let's look at C. In C they're asking us, is this quantity 4v squared plus 4 square root of v plus 1, is this quantity a perfect square? Is this quantity a perfect square? Let's try something, shall we? Let's try something. Which one do you want to do first? Algebraically or non-algebraically? 
let's do algebraically first, shall we? And before we do, and, and we, before we actually deal with what is given to us, let's look at this quantity here. I have taken out the square root sign. Let's see what it, this gives us. 4v squared, 4v squared can be written as 2v squared plus 2 times 2v, 2, 2 times 2v plus, or rather times 1 plus 1 squared. You see this 1, we are writing it as 1 squared. Again, what do we see? We see, we see our 2v here is our a, so it's a squared plus 2 times a times b, our b is 1 plus b, b is 1, so it's b squared. I shouldn't have used this blue one, it's very difficult to read. I need a new marker because this black one is dying. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is simply a plus b whole squared. a is 2b and b is 1. Oh, so it turns out that this quantity is indeed perfect square. Is indeed perfect square. Which some people, there are two kinds of people who get this question wrong. There, are, there is a vast majority of people who simply do not know how to handle it. And then there is a minority of people who do know the algebra, who do know what's going on. But this is something that can happen to anybody. If you're, if you're being too cocky, if you're being too careless, if you're going too fast, in your haste, you might end up ignoring this root sign. And if you ignore the root sign, it does work out. But alas, we do, we do not have this quantity. We don't have 4v. What is given to us is 4 times square root of v. Without the square root sign, it works out. But the, with the square root sign, it will not work out. You will see it is not a perfect square. So let's do it. Let's do it plugging in method. Because there's no way to square this thing. It's not going to work. Let's plug, let's plug in. Let's plug in some simple number. Let's let, let v be equal to 4. See what happens? So 4 times 4 squared plus 4 times square root of 4 plus 1. 4, 4 squared is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, plus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1. Watch what happens now. 8 plus 1 is 9, so what we end up is 64 plus 9. And again, people in their haste will think that if 64 is a perfect square, which it is, 64 is a perfect square, 9 is a perfect square, therefore in their haste they might conclude that if 64 is a perfect square and 9 is a perfect square, therefore their sum should be a perfect square. Not necessarily so. Not necessarily so. Sum, S-U-M sum, of two perfect, square, perfect squares does not does not necessarily have to be a perfect square. One more time. The sum, S-U-M sum. You see, we're, we're taking the sum of two perfect square. The sum of, sum of two perfect square does not necessarily have to be a perfect square. We cannot, we cannot say the sum, listen carefully. We cannot make a claim that the sum of two perfect square is not, per, not a perfect square. If somebody tells you that the sum of two perfect square is not a perfect square, they are wrong. Because there are instances, there are exceptions where this statement actually works out, where the sum of the two perfect square result in a, in a, in a, in a, a results in something that is also a perfect square. But not always. In most cases it will not, but there are some cases when it does. We'll come to that in a second. As you can clearly see here, 64 plus 9 is going to give us 73, and 73 is not a perfect square. So it does not work. It is not, this quantity is not a perfect square. Do you understand? This quantity is not a perfect square. The product of two perfect, the product of two square is, 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 the product of two perfect square is a perfect square. We saw that a little while ago, but not a sum. Well, not necessarily so. I'm going to share with you here, so this statement does not work. This statement does not work. It's not a perfect square. Because you only have to find one exception and we just did it. I'm going to share with you here a couple of instances, exceptions, exceptions where
exceptions where the sum of two perfect square is also a perfect square. As I was sitting there thinking about it and I thought long and hard and I could only think of two scenarios and the two scenarios are this, these. Two scenarios are these right here. Hold on, give me a second, I have to define it. Oh, I know by heart, I just want to make sure that I don't end up saying, saying something wrong. Here is, here is 9 is a perfect square, you see? 9 is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square. The sum of two perfect square, when we add them, we get 25, which is also a perfect square. Which, by the way, happens to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Here's another one. Here's another one. I just hit it. There we go. 36 is a perfect square, isn't it? 36 is a square of 6. And 64 is a perfect square. Unless I did my addition wrong. 36 plus 64, that's right, because 4, you take you take the 4 from here, give it to here, it becomes 40. So these two, when you add them, see 36 is a perfect square, 64 is a perfect square, when we add them, we get 100, which is also a perfect square. What I would like you to do, as a favor to me, as a big favor to me, I usually don't ask people to leave out any comment or subscribe to the channel, I never ask for it. If they want to do it, fine. If they don't want to do it, that's fine also, I never ask. But today I'm going to make an exception, and I will ask you, as a favor to me, to leave some comments, Just leave in, in the comment section, see, see if you can leave me some other scenarios where the sum of two perfect square is also a perfect square. I would like to have about eight more. I can only think of two. I would like to have a ten exceptions there. Only up to ten. And I'm sure we can probably come up with uh, you and I together, all of us working together, what we can think of. And of course, and of course I have absolutely no doubt that some mathematician at some point in time has actually worked on this theorem and has a way, has a nifty algebraic way of figuring out these pairs instead of simply thinking about them. But I am not the, of, of that caliber. I do, not, I, I do not know any such theorem, but I am almost 100% sure that such a theorem exists. And that theorem will tell you exactly how to locate the two perfect square, which when added up together also results in a perfect square. Would you do it for me? If you come across two numbers which are perfect square and when we add them the result is also perfect square, leave that in the comment section. I would love it. That's the end of that that's the end of that question. So what was the conclusion? The course conclusion was the conclusion was where can we put it? The conclusion was the statement A we saw that statement A works. We also saw that statement B works. The statement A was was, was of course the easiest one, that was a baby version. And statement C just that we just saw does not work. It would have worked without the square root sign. But with the square root sign it does not work. Here's the percentile if you're curious. About about four fifths of the people got it wrong. 21% of the people had, had luck on it. 21% of the people got it right. About a fifth of the people that is. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.